Okay, guys, good afternoon. I am recording this session. I will give you a brief introduction about the course book, which I am in the process of uh, development. You can find this course book in your contents folder. So, as you know, this course is about demonstrate AC and DC principles in electronic circuits. So, uh, you will go on through this course according to your course outline. We will cover the topics. Okay, so I will just give you a brief introduction. I will not go into detail because most of these things you are already aware of. So, if you look at the screen, you can see the first I covered basic electrical quantities okay the basic terms which you need to know for the starting of this course or it's the base knowledge which you should have so here in this table you will find all the basic terms which were mentioned in the course outline of this course for example the first one here is the types of materials as you know that uh, being electrical engineer we categorize different materials into three groups first one insulator okay the material in through which the current cannot flow examples are mentioned here second one is the conductor so those materials through which current can flow here are the examples and third one is the semiconductor so it is the material with the properties in between of conductor and insulator so they have both the properties or you can say they lie in the middle of insulator and conductor based on its resistivity or conductivity so these are the common examples here apart from this you will see other basic definitions like charge which is the fundamental property of uh, of any particle like we have positive charge negative charge their unit and their formula how to find charge current which is symbolized by the i the letter i so current is the flow of rate of flow of electrons so this is the formula to find that you are aware of it that this is the ohms law the famous ohms law that current is directly proportional to the voltage and at the same time the current is inversely proportional to the resistance unit of current is ampere then voltage or emf emf stands for electromotive force so it is because of the potential difference between two points so it's symbolized with the letter v it's the force pushing electrons to flow in a circuit so this is the unit if you look at this uh, table here it is unit with symbol in this column so this is the ohms law similarly resistance power the formulas for power all the possible formulas are given here the unit of power watt so you will fi find most of the things here then is the inductance symbolized by the letter l inductance is the ability of a component to store energy in the magnetic field that is created by the flow of electrical current inductor looks like a spring if you <clears throat> if you look at the picture from internet you will see that it's just like a spring or you can say like a coil a copper wire if you turn it around any <clears throat> cylindrical shape item so it will uh, look like a coil or a spring that is called inductance when current flow through the inductor then as you know whenever current flows there is a magnetic field so the magnetic field is produced around that inductor so this component it has the ability to store energy in the magnetic field okay and that magnetic field is created by the flow of electrical current 
now the energy is required to set up the magnetic field and this energy needs to be released when the field falls what does it mean it simply means when it is storing energy into the magnetic field okay while it is working while the circuit is working while the current is flowing when you switch off the current when you switch off your circuit that energy which was stored in the magnetic field that will be released out of the inductor as current the current will flow into the circuit so if you think it is somehow similar to the capacitor capacitor also stores energy in it in itself in the electrical field actually the capacitor saves energy in the electrical electrostatic field while the inductor stores energy as magnetic field both components they store energy and when you switch off they release the energy they release the energy into the circuit so both have a kind of a similar uh, principle the unit of uh, inductance measurement henry henry is after the name of the scientist who discovered this phenomena and this is the formula and all the uh, contributing elements are mentioned here l for inductance mu is for permeability n is the number of turns in the coil a is the area encircled by the coil and l is the length of the coil when you open that coil or spring how much is the length so when you put all these things together in this formula you can find the inductance capacitance is the next term capacitance is symbolized by letter c it is the ability of a component to collect and store energy in the form of electrical charge or electrostatic field as you know that we can measure capacitance with the unit of farad it is also after the name of the scientist who discovered this phenomena the formula is written here and these are the contributing elements details so this was all about uh, the basic terms then i also added a couple of more terms about current and voltage types you already know that one is the alternating current and one is the direct current the definition and source examples are given in this table so this is just a kind of a refresher which you can have a look on it uh, in case you want to uh, know more about it or you want to check the formula or unit the next topic is about comparison of ac and dc the pictures can show you the difference and comparison easily the first picture it is the current voltage current or voltage waveform so you know this waveform could be for current or for voltage both so here uh, it is for the voltage as you can see on y axis is the voltage and x axis is, is the time and this is a sine wave and this behavior is displayed by alternating current in short we call it ac so different um, spots on this wave are are mentioned here you can read them they, they are just showing that uh, where the current or voltage is rising where it reaches the peak point where it drops to the zero uh, and where it goes to the negative peak so like that so this is the common example of alternating current the sine wave they, these four graphs here they represent dc dc uh, behavior but look at the picture a the a here if you look at the uh this picture description here the pure dc is shown in part a so part a is only for the pure dc which is a straight line the part b the picture b it shows something like this which which looks towards i mean you can see that this is kind of a ripples kind of a wavy structure but still this is not ac because the reason it is only in the positive direction it does not cross this x axis and it do not 
go to the negative direction so that's why we will call it dc but this dc is not pure so this is also dc in picture b in picture c this is also dc and in picture d this is also a dc all these three examples are dc but you can say impure dc and if you remember uh, you have studied that this kind of waveform you get from the full wave rectifier when you convert ac into dc a rectifier which converts ac into dc it gives you waveform like this for a full wave rectifier for the half wave rectifier you get output like this so this was all about the comparison of ac and dc waveforms then are the basic electrical symbols you already have the idea about basic electrical symbols so they are shown here you can uh, go through them okay so this was the introduction of the basic uh, things the basic topics which i just wanted to show you and give you introduction of the course book okay the capacitor and inductor which we just discussed you can see their symbol here so both of these are the symbol of capacitor and for inductor which i told you just look like a spring it is shown here okay guys so i will stop the recording and welcome you for any question answer session